Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, and thanks for stopping by the channel. Now I've got another pretty simple pattern for you today. Even though this one was not in Morgan Lyle's Simple Flies, I actually got it from Stetzer's Flies the Best 1000. It's another no frills general searching nymph. This one was created by Charles Brooks. It's called the Ida May. Now a lot of you have probably heard of Charles Brooks. He was a pretty famous author. He was born in 1921 in Illinois. In 1942, joined the Army Air Corps and served in World War II as a bombardier. After the war, he rejoined in what was now the Air Force and served uh, until 1964 when he retired as an Air Force officer and moved out to West Yellowstone, Montana. So after getting out west, he became pretty much an authority on uh, the Yellowstone region, particularly Henry's Fork and the Madison. He published six pretty popular books. I'd say the most famous was Nymph Fishing for Larger Trout in 1976. And he created several of his own patterns, one of which we're tying today, the Ida May. Now, I couldn't find a whole lot of history on this particular fly, but I'm guessing he came up with it in the 60s, maybe the early 70s. But again, it's a really simple pattern. I'd say the most distinguishing feature is that it's got an olive soft hackle for the tail and then a grizzly dyed olive for the front hackle. So it's a pretty cool looking fly. I think you're gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there you go, in the vise, an item A. A little bit hard to tell, but that is indeed an olive color with the green background. It obscures it a little bit, but most popular size for this, size 10 and 12. I'm tying it on a size 10. It's a 1X long nymph hook. And I'm using 020 weight. Go ahead and put, uh, wrap it about you know, maybe three-fourths, almost the whole length of the, the shank. Just kind of center that on the flat part of your hook right there. And I'm using black 70 denier UTC. I'll put a little dam behind it, take it up over the weight, and then put a dam up front, then bring it back to the tail. Now, if you can get a little taper between your weight and your hook, that's fine. If not, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Next thing we're gonna tie in is a tail. This is a grizzly hen dyed olive, and I'm gonna use the same feather that I'm gonna wrap for the, the front hackle, but I will just you know, take some of these longer fibers down here, and I'll grab about 15 of them, pull it out, not that many. See how is that gonna look? Yep, that's about how many I want right there. A little bit longer than a hook gap. I want to see a little bit of that olive there. So let's go ahead and catch this in with two wraps and see what we got. Okay, I think that is a little bit too long. So I'm going to back that off and then shorten it just a little. Okay, that's a little better right there. And then use some of this fluff right here to help you wait, uh, fill in this, this gap between the hook and the weight. That's kind of a big looking mess right there, but nothing that our scissors can't take care of. So we'll just snip this, don't snip your thread. I'm sure that's happened to a few of you out there. Happens to me more often than I like to admit. But there's our tail. It's a little bit uh, soft hackleish. Now the next component is some copper or gold wire in a size fine which I'd say is, you know, extra small right here. I'm just gonna catch it in right here behind the weight. Two or three wraps, get it secure. And then take my thread back up here to where I'm gonna catch in the next component, which is peacock curl. Three strands of peacock curl. Now, I will snip off the front, oh, inch or so, maybe inch and a half of the brittle stuff. and then catch these in back to the tail where we're gonna start wrapping. Now the next trick right here, don't take your thread all the way up. Take it about halfway. I'm not gonna spin these as a rope. I'm just gonna wrap them straight up side by side since I'm gonna rib it. And if you leave your thread about halfway, by the time that these peacock curls are starting to spread out on you, uh, you can use that thread to help hold them together. See, I'm just gonna leave it right there and then push push the thread forward as I wrap up. 
and we'll want to take this just in front of the, the weighted wraps, leave us some room for the front hackle. Okay, I think that's going to be fine right there. We got a nice, almost football shaped body right there. That's a pretty thick strand of peacock curl, so it's not going to break. I will just reach in here and snip them. Now, next thing to do is counter wrap this wire rib. And on this size, what did I say, size 10? Yeah, probably four, five, maybe even six wraps to get all these locked in really good. I don't think this gives it any extra weight. Don't need any segmentation on this, so I'm pretty sure it's just for durability to hold these brittle peacock hurls in place. So if you use a few wraps right here to really lock this in, so I can spin this off without risking it unraveling on me. Take my thread back just a little where I'm gonna catch in this hackle. So remember this piece we used? I'm just gonna go ahead and strip off all the fluff. Give me a little bare stem to work with here. And I'm gonna catch it in from the tip. So I'll pull it back and create a little V-notch right here. Concave side toward the hook. Two or three securing wraps right here. Fold it back over, one or two more. And now we can snip off this tip, the excess, before we wrap. And wrap this just like you would any soft hackle, really. We'll try three and see how that looks. I don't think we'll need to go to four, but we'll see how it looks after three. That's two. And there's three. That's definitely going to be enough. So pull that on up a little bit more. Catch it off on this side with two thread wraps. And let's do one more for good measure. And snip off this excess right here, just as close as you can get it. Now let's sweep these back and build our head. Just going to pull these back. My thread is right behind the eye. I'm gonna ramp it back up. And it's a nymph, so don't worry about making a tiny head. Well, you don't need to make it any bigger than you want, but I kinda of like some big heads on my nymphs. Okay, four or five turn whip finish right here. Snip that off and a drop of head cement and the item A is done. Pretty nifty looking Charles Brooks pattern. So that's it everybody, I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.